Thank you for tuning in, Voice of Reason Boston on WEZ E590 AM. This morning we have National Society of Black Engineer Boston Professionals, um, also known as NSB Boston. Today we have Laddie Oladi, president of the organization, as well as Odane White, which, who is the program director um, for the organization as well. Uh, we're going to be talking about this organization, what it's doing in Boston, and how everyone in the community and their children can benefit from them. And um, thank you for tuning in. And I want to say thank you to all um, our listeners and our viewers on Facebook who supported my husband. Um, he is now on his third session of chemo, but he is doing well. Um, I know he's listening to me. Um, baby, I love you. And um, I want to say thank you guys for coming. Thanks thank for you. having us. Yes. And um, can you just introduce yourself and let our listeners know um, and our, our followers on Facebook know what you're all about, um, how'd you get involved, and so that we can get to know you better um, and as well as the community as well. Sure. Thank you again for having us on your show. Um, it's your a show. pleasure. It's a pleasure. So hi to the Facebook family. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Lottie. Um, I'm the current president of um, National Society of Black Engineers, Boston Professionals. Okay. And um, I've been affiliated with the organization. I don't like to keep track of time because I'm forever right. young, right? Yes. But yes. Um, 2005 was when I actually um, joined the organization in camp on, on campus um, at my college. I went to Tennessee State University, HBCU. Mm -hmm. For yes. year. Um, and the funny story is Boston was actually my first engagement mm -hmm. um, with the organization. The national convention was here. Um, I thought it, it's a good way to take a trip to Boston. Yeah. So I'll join the organization for that. Mm -hmm. So I came out here and it was kind of a, a relationship with the organization that um, till what, 2019, I'm still involved. Wow, that's excellent. Um, and SB Boston gave me like my first internship, first job. Wow. First scholarship, so there's just a lot of stuff that I um, I appreciate and owe to the organization. Um, just a little bit more about myself. I've been in Boston for four years. Mm -hmm. um, I love it so far. Folks always say they hate Boston, but I'm one of the few that love it. Um, I was in Pittsburgh prior to that, and my background is industrial engineering, but I work now more in IT project management, um, so I'm glad to be on the show. Thank you for coming. That's excellent. And Odane? Yeah, so uh, my name is Odane White. I'm the Programs Director for Nesby Boston. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a Senior Project Manager with Jones Lang LaSalle, uh, where I manage uh, construct capital construction projects for uh, different companies right now mm -hmm. uh, for the MITRE Corporation in Boston. Um, I first joined Nesby uh, my freshman year of college, uh, Wentworth Institute of Technology, uh, where I studied des design and facilities management. Uh, my freshman year, I joined, uh, the first conference I went to was in Las Vegas, wow. which wow. was a culture shock for me. Yeah. I've seen so many, I forgot, I think at the time was the largest convention ever attended, 9,000 plus mm -hmm. uh, black students. Wow. Uh, in one under one roof, which was amazing for me. After that, I was like, "Sign me up! Let, you know, let me see how much more I can do to help the mission of mm -hmm. the organization." So that's good. That's also that's good that you you were intrigued by the large amount of African American um, people that are in college trying to do something in the community because you don't always hear that. You don't always see that in the forefront, and it's good to know that they still have people like you and Lottie that are still trying to continue that mission in the community of Boston. And we're going to get to know about this organization and how people we can get involved because I know you have a mentorship program and you also have volunteering as well. So I think it's good to get the um, community. I know there's a lot of um, black and brown um, kids that are in college right now and sometimes once they graduate they move out. Um, so it's good to know that this program is out there and that people can get involved and find kind of like their niche where they can specifically focus on the community that they're living in to help. And also, if you have any questions or you'd like to know more about this organization, feel free to call us. Our number is 617-328-7514. Um, call us if you have any questions or how to get involved. Um, just give us a call and we're going to... Um, try to answer anything that we can to the best of our ability. Um, just tell us a little bit about the chapter history of Nesby, how it came about, um, just the reasoning behind it. 
Yeah, sure, I can take that. Um, so NSB, National Society of Black Engineers, was founded in 1975 by six um, young kings, mm -hmm. um, six men, um, black men in college, in, engi in an engineering program at Purdue University in Indiana. Um, just try to think about what that looked like in 1975 in Indiana. I mean, it wasn't too long after the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. um, and they felt like they had to create a community that was that was going to build them and support them through the engineering program. For a lot of them, there were singles in the different programs, the only single black male or just the only black male at all in the entire school. So it was a way for them to create that community. And um, 1975 to 2019, right. a lot of the stories haven't changed. But we're, the testimony is that the organization continues to grow, and we have a mission. Mm -hmm. uh, do we want to recite the mission? Sure. <laughs> to, Which is to, to increase, increase the number of culturally responsible black engineers who excel, excel academically, excel academically succeed, professionally, succeed professionally, and positively impact, impact the community. community. That's wonderful. So just to mind on that a little bit, um, mm -hmm. so again, it, it's to increase the number of culturally responsible black engineers. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not just about us going to college or getting degrees and saying we're part of STEM mm -hmm. and successful, but it's for us to be culturally responsible, culturally competent. What are we doing to get back into the community and raise each other up? So a lot of our programs that we do are very community-centered. At the heart of what we do is to ensure that we have youth STEM programs to make sure our high school and middle school, uh, and, and middle school students mm -hmm. have the resources and support um, to excel. Um, all the, the, the other piece of that was... Um, succeed professionally, right? So we're professionals and we want to make sure that we have a community of fellow professionals can lean on and also grow and be supported. Um, and then f finally is to make sure that we, we are positively impacting the community. So in everything we do, we're impacting the environment in the right way. Right. Um, we're impacting our young ones. We're impacting even those that didn't go to college, making them feel part of STEM, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be an engineer to be a supporter of STEM. You could be working in a role that supports them and ensuring that, you know what, I chose to be in this role to make sure that there's more opportunities for people of color like myself. Right. Um, so, so at the national level, um, the organization is global. Um, it's in different continents. Um, it's split into six different regions. Um, the new northeastern U.S. is in Region 1, which is where Nesby, Boston, um, mm -hmm. is located. Um, but there's um, regions in the southwestern part of the U.S., the uh, west coast, the Caribbean, South America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Um, and NSB Boston was actually founded in 1988. Um, so this year is our third anniversary. We're very excited. Um, for those of you that follow us on social media or are or, or friends with the chapter, you've probably received information on our third anniversary, and we're excited about that. That's coming up during Black History Month, which I think is very pivotal for us to make sure that we're celebrating STEM in Boston um, on February 23rd, and it's going to be um, a black tie affair. It's at the Ritz Carlton, Boston. So wow. obviously, we're looking for everyone to come out and support. It's a fundraiser. We can't do all the things we do by ourselves, so we need the community the support, support yeah. um, both financially and also by volunteering, providing resources for us. We appreciate everyone that supported us for the last 30 years, and we're looking for everyone to be part of the next 30. I'll definitely share that information, and I think what's important is that we don't usually see um, our young black and brown kids focus on um, engineering or other STEM programs. It's mostly other professionals, and it's not, it, it's it's not out there, as I should say. Um, and I and I went to a um, a gala last year, and I was intrigued um, by Yvonne Spicer. She's the first African American mayor in Framing Framingham, Massachusetts. And I was listening to her speech, and she was telling me she was um, she was in the engineering fe field. And she was an engineer, and now she's the mayor of um, of Framingham, and that's a big accomplishment. But she was also letting us know that there's not enough of us in the engineering field, and and it's important for us to kind of like put our children into programs, go to the schools, and speak to um, all types of um, schools in the area about make sure making sure that children get access to the STEM program. And I know some schools, like my son's school, they're focusing on the STEM program, but I just think it's not enough. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think when I first joined Nesby, I heard 
the statistics on how many, mm -hmm. you know, black and brown engineers there were, and I think it was somewhere around three to four percent, and I was shocked. Well, you know, especially yeah. being at a conference where I'm seeing thousands and thousands of black engineers, and just to know that this isn't even, <laughs> this is this is no right. nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, it made me want to do more to increase that number. So. You know, every year, when being a part of this organization, whether I impact one or two students for the year, or just you know, black or brown uh, mm -hmm. professionals, uh, just to expose them to STEM, right. it, it's always a good feeling for me. You know, it means yeah. that we're marching in the right direction, and we're not the only chapters that do this. Right. You know, we have uh, hundreds of professional chapters ac across the U.S. So. And also, just to tie back into the history of the organization, mm -hmm. um, I know I, I'm going to we'll focus it a lot more on SB professionals, but um, just to let it sink in for folks, there's over 22 different colleges, um, chapters. Um, so a lot of the com the campuses, MIT, Harvard, Northeastern, Boston <coughs> University, they all have NSB oh, collegiate chapters. Mm -hmm. So our black engineering students have support. Um, on campus, for most professionals, as well as at the national level. So, because that I think that's the pipeline that we have. We um, we sometimes neglect, and folk kids graduate and then they become professionals yeah. and they're lost. So we exactly. always try to make sure that we steer them in the right direction, coach, mentor, encourage them. Um, so 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 we're obviously going to talk a lot more about our programs, but I just wanted to put that out there that we're in the colleges as well as the high schools too. And I think it's important that once we do get access to these professionals that they're able to participate in in leadership positions so that we can see them because not all the time we have the opportunity to see someone in a major company or uh, doing something um, that's really up there like with other other people. Um, I You mostly see Caucasian or other nationalities but when we have smart um, black and brown professionals I think they need to have access for them to be in leadership positions so like people you and I or children, our children growing up can see, oh, this person, I admire this person and um, I want to be what they are doing. I want to be part of that. So I think it's important for us to, to talk and engage about this conversation and help people to know more about, you know, how to, how, how to push their children in the direction of, of the STEM program so that they can be engineers and learn and be in positions where they're making a difference in their community. So that's that's most important for me. Um, so the mission, can you tell me about the mission of Nesby? Um, why the mission is important and for all of us to know in the community for uh, Nesby? Because you hear Nesby, but you don't like. For me, I I I started to get to know you guys in passing on Facebook, but like going other places, I really didn't know about you know, what you guys were all about. And actually, my, my girlfriend was telling me, have you reached out to Nesby Boston? They, they're they a very good organization. You should reach out to them and learn more about them. And, you know, that's how we're here today. Uh, but it's important for people like me to reach out to you all and to, you know, spread the word because it's important for us to, for people out there and kids in college to know that we have professional organizations that are that are looking to do things in the community, but they're more, they're not out there more. That's for me. I don't know if I'm wrong. No, yeah, yeah. you're you're definitely correct, and I think it, it's good for us to hear the feedback from the community, right? Um, we do a lot of things, and a lot of times we're not looking for the accolades or the praise, mm -hmm. but it's always good to, to to get that feedback. So thank right. you for that. Um, so just going back to the mission, um, again, it's pretty much to grow the number of black engineers. Mm -hmm. um, I heard someone say once, we can't all be engineers, so I'm just going to focus on what I need to do. And then my rebuttal is, we can't all be engineers, but we can all be advocates for black engineers. Exactly. Right? Yes. Um, even if you don't have a passion for engineering, you can still be an advocate. You can commit to, 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 to pretty much to the, to, to the programs. You can support our programs. You can mentor kids. A lot of what we do, we're not telling kids you have to be engineers. <coughs> we're just giving them the tools to right. make the right decisions when they go on to college or whatever it is they want to do. So that's pretty much what the NASA mission is. It's pretty much a building a foundation right. for you to be able to make the right decisions. Obviously, in today's environment, being in a STEM career is kind of 
one of the better options. Yes, yeah. um, I mean, just to be honest, I mean, it's the best paying jobs that are in STEM it's right true. now. It's and true. we don't want our kids to be left behind. No. Right? No, I mean, if you look at the Boston, I mean, obviously Massachusetts is progressive, but when we break things down by race, certain right. races are doing better than the next, right? Yeah, so we want to make true. sure what part of that story we're frontiers, we're leading the charge, and we're not behind. So that's a lot of what NASB is, is building the foundation and giving resources and um, and, the, and the right tools for our kids to succeed. Do you want to add anything to that? No, I think Lottie said it perfect. You okay. Know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more once we get into our programming as well. Okay, so I know we talked about STEM, but is there something in particular that you guys are focusing on in Boston, like in the Dorchester, inner city Boston area to help our community move forward and progress, not only in the engineering field, but in in professionalism and individuality in their life and their, in their career to help pass the baton to the next generation that's coming um, after us. Yeah, um, so I'll start. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go back a little bit. So Nesby uh, is, one of, if not the largest student-ran organization in the U.S. That's good. We create leaders, we build leaders, we support leaders. Um, we support students from grades 3 mm -hmm. to 12, which is our Nesby Junior, we call PCI, um, collegiate members, as well as professional members. And I think, you know, Lottie touched on the, the pipeline and, and connecting the pipeline. You know, we want to be, because we were there, we were once there as professionals. Exactly. Yeah. And being able to be a mentor to those, to the younger generation coming up. You know, I know when I, when I was in college, one, one thing that uh, Nesby helped me with was creating that network that, you know, it was too late, I think, not, I wouldn't say too late, but it wasn't until probably my, my junior year mm -hmm. where I realized that there were so many people who have, walk the same path that I have that could be support a support system for me yeah. you know in my career after college and making those connections I remember in college you know my one of my professors said to me your your net work mm -hmm. is equivalent to your net worth, worth. yeah <laughs> and I, I try to be an advocate for networking mm -hmm. I love going out talking to different people and just connecting folks right. because you just never know that's true when you might meet someone who could help you get to that next level and just by a simple mm -hmm. conversation you know um, going back to um, what were we talking about the programming yeah um, so we do part of what we want to do with our younger kids um, we do a lot of uh, Guest, speak, guest lectures at schools where we find out, you know, kids in the inner city mm -hmm. schools, they aren't exposed to STEM. They don't know what engineering wow. is. And we're, 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 we're shocked some of these times, you know, we go to these schools and we talk to these students and we're like, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? We'll Basketball. hear doctors, lawyers, you know, mm -hmm. sports, um, but no one says engineering. Right. Why? They don't know what engineering exactly. is. Exactly. And it's very especially when we are in a world filled with technology yes you know when we wake up in the morning you know the bus we take to school the you know brushing our teeth you know mm -hmm. these are all created by engineers but a lot of us don't know that that you know there's so many different types of engineering right. that you could get into so just us exposing those kids to the different types of engineering uh, hands-on activities you know, it, it, it gives us an enjoyed feeling seeing them light up. Right. And no and being able to know something that they never knew about and wanting to know more about it and yearn to be more about it and eventually that seed that you plant, they'll be able to grow 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 with that. And once they once they go to college, they'll probably, you know, wanna stick with that major that that they learned about during high school. Now, right. when how many schools in Boston have you interacted with in, in regards to the STEM program with your organization? Uh, so there's about, I think right now, uh, we have about uh, uh, five to seven Nesby Boston 
uh, Nesby Junior chapters that we support. Okay. Um, and we've also created uh, our own Nesby Junior chapter, which we call Boss Squad, um, where these are students who are not affiliated with with STEM schools and just you know go to uh, different schools and want to be exposed to engineering. Um, so I guess you could add that to, to the list. Um, we probably uh, support anywhere from 20 to 40 students uh, at a given time. Um, part of our programming we do is we have a monthly STEM day. Okay. Uh, it's one Saturday in every month where we'll probably host it at a different camp college campus okay. or an engineering company who mm -hmm. let us in. We have a lot of supporters <laughs> and, and sponsors. Uh, that will give us space. We are non nonprofit, <laughs> uh, of course. So we look for so anybody out there who has a space that's willing to host us. Facebook, <laughs> uh, definitely Google. reach out to <laughs> us uh, nesbyboston.org. Uh, shoot us a message. Um, but we do this to do hands-on activities, various activities. If mm -hmm. we do it at a, a specific engineering company, we might ask them to host where they might do a mock project okay. that they're doing and just just have the kids have a feel for what they're doing and, and just expose them to the different types of engineering. And what are some of the national and local other programs that you provide as well? Yes, I can talk. To, so just to tie, um, to run back a little bit, um, I know you asked about programs. Obviously, mm -hmm. we do a lot of STEM programs, yes. but for folks listening, please don't feel like, oh, I'm not an engineer, so I can't be a volunteer support. We do um, community events like helping out at the food bank. Mm -hmm. um, I know this year we were planning to visit um, a senior living facility to Make sure we include our older right. folks. I mean, they can't be left out of stuff we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not it's never too late to, to be part of STEM. So right. they, they also need to know what's going on and and dial back in. Um, we do um, sporting activities. Um, next month, we're actually going to the ski slopes. So okay. wow. black folks, we can ski. So <laughs> come out and support. Um, so that's in collaboration with the Boston Ski Club. It's also a, a black ski club in Boston, um, and they have great programs as well. Um, we also have engagements with other professional groups where okay. we um, collaborate with the black accountants, um, black MBAs, um, the Hispanic professionals, and Alpha. So a lot of our programming is STEM-based, but <coughs> we also do have community programs. And just tying back to the national programs that we have, mm -hmm. so like he mentioned, we do have three levels of membership. So there's the professionals, there's the folks in college, and then there's our kids in um, our junior programs for our middle schools and high school kids. Um, at the middle school and high school, we have what we call the Summer Engi Engineering Experience um, Kids okay. Program. It's called SEEK, and what that is is pretty much in, I think right now they're in 10 different cities nationwide, every summer for four weeks, and SB sponsors four weeks of engineering programming, 8 to 2 p.m. So pretty much kids, right. parents can drop kids off and they mm -hmm. can learn about engineering. It's all funded by our corporate donors and NSB. So it's free? It's free pretty much. Okay, that's um, great. I know, I don't think they've been to Boston yet. No. We're going to keep actively campaigning. If you're out there, please send emails, letters, tell them to bring the program to Boston. It's a great program. Um, I know it's in San Francisco, Seattle. I think it's in Chicago this year, Houston. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are some of the programs we do at that stage. At the collegiate level, we have lots of college scholarships. I can't stress this enough. Lots of college scholarships that go wasted because folks do not apply. Mm -hmm. So if you're a parent out there or you have kids that are having concerns about what next semester is going to look like, please visit NSB, um, nsbe.org and go to the scholarship section. There are scholarships for everyone. Google, Facebook, yeah. Microsoft, they all have programs for us. But if we don't apply or we don't know about it, <coughs> exactly then how we're gonna get access? How we, to we're it. not gonna get access? So I encourage everyone to visit and and just learn more about opportunities out there. And then for professionals, we have um, entrepreneurship programs. Obviously, we're engineers, but a lot of us still want to have to a side start hustle. Up. I yeah. mean, start up something. Um, Boston has a great startup scene, but what I've noticed is. We talk about diversity and inclusion, but you get there and we're not included in no. these conversations, right? So I, two, two nights ago, I was actually at an event for startups, and they were like, oh, we have great diversity and inclusion programs. And I said, oh, can you tell me more? <laughs> oh, we have a, a women's um, incubation, da, da, da. I was like, okay, what, what else? 
Um, yeah. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's inclusive. Um, like, if you look around in, in the city, like, you don't need to go too far to see Latinos and black folks in right. Roxbury, Dorchester. Do you have programs that encourage or support? And I'm like, oh, we're going to think about that. And I, then I think to myself, I was like, okay, are we really just using this as a buzzword or does it mean something? Right. You don't have to hire black folks or include black folks, but there's others. There's Asians, there's LGBT, there's veterans, there's mm -hmm. um, our senior citizens. So it's for everyone out there to really think about what does diversity and inclusion mean? And we have to be included. We as also as black people also have to include ourselves. One thing that, I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah. one thing that really irks me is when you go to a company or you go to a meeting, whether it's at a job or somewhere else, um, you know, they say they focus on diversity, but none of the leadership represents diversity. And if there is, if they mention diversity, there's probably one black, one Hispanic, one Latino, and it's considered, it's like, uh, it's like diversity. No, it's unacceptable. If you're going to re represent diversity, someone in the diverse community needs to represent that all across the board. I'm not saying to hire all blacks, I'm not saying to hire all Latinos, but if you're going to mention um, diversity, make sure that your leaderships, your leadership professionals that are that are sending the message to people in the community that it represents diversity. Right. But that's what I just... No, yeah. yeah, and just to kind of wrap up the programs too, so some programs we have, NSB has regional leadership co um, conferences, so mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, we try to grow our college and high school students, so there's leadership trainings um, in the summertime for them. We do have it's regional conferences, it's free, um, for the high school. Uh, but high school is free, but college, it's free. like it's a about small, 20 bucks. $20 fee, so, that's I mean, nothing at all. It's nothing at all, no. and we do get sponsorships to cover that, so um, I know we've taken kids out to Brown University, Rhode Island, um, the, the state of Mass actually provided transportation, so we have a lot of support from the state, the city level, the Boston City Mayor's Office is a big supporter oh, of great. ours, That's too. Oh, great. That's awesome. It's always great to have folks yes. at the state and city level supporting yeah. us. Um, we have a national conference, which, like he mentioned, is probably the largest black convention anywhere in the world that mm -hmm. I, I've seen. Pretty much nine to 10,000 black folks. Wow educated or being educated mm -hmm. um we should it's, have it's, some in boston yeah it was yeah, here actually yeah, so we, we did have it in boston 2016 um i was a part of the planning committee where you know unfortunately i think the following year they broke our record but we, was, we were very proud of the attendance we we had 12,000 wow over 12,000 uh people in the city of boston um for the convention so we bro we broke uh, you know, I think Vegas mm -hmm. had yeah. a previous record, and I think the year after was in um, um, Kansas. No, it was in um, California. No, after Boston. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere, some other city that is not that cool. Yeah, but Boston, we definitely right? should try to do that again because I think um, <clears throat> sometimes we're underrepresented. I think you know, uh, people who are in major uh, leadership positions or just African American who has a career making good money are not out there to support the younger people who are looking to be in in, in their shoes. So I think we 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 still need to work together as a community and to promote professionalism, education, and um, communication and how to get towards your goal. Right. I think we need but to continue yeah, to do that. Perfect. And um, I know you have a mentorship program. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that, um, what it consists of, and how you can become a mentor, um, and what you need to do? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about it. So our mentorship program, you know, we've realized and we've got feedback from our members as well who have said, you know, well, I'm probably leaving college going into my professional life. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be great for us to have a you know, a, a mentor that we could call on and ask certain questions. Um, a lot of our college students do reach out. They do have relationships with our Nesby Boston mm -hmm. board, but there's we have other members as well okay. in different industries, right? So we, we, we are not the only, right. uh, I think right now our board consists of maybe uh, eight to ten, um, uh, but we are a chapter of how many? Um, so I think as of yesterday, uh, 170 plus. Oh wow! So That's we're good. definitely growing. 
we want you guys watching, listening to become members as well. NSBBoston.org. Um, visit us, find out ways to volunteer and become members and support the mission. Yeah, so back to uh, our, our mentorship. Um, we wanted to provide an avenue for, for both high school students to probably connect with college students mm -hmm. because they're going into that next level or college students to connect with professionals. And this is basically a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it could be uh, we run the program through through uh, Nesby Boston where we'll connect the, the ask, right? You have professionals who want to be mentors to the younger mm -hmm. students uh, and just give them that avenue where they could meet one-on-one, -on -one, talk about anything, uh, struggles in life or even yeah. um, college or career and so forth. And, and we, we wanted to make sure that we supported our mem members, you know, whether high school, middle school, professionals and and collegiate members to just have that because I know for myself I always said if I knew what I know now right when I was younger mm -hmm. you know my my career path probably would have went a different route right you know probably wouldn't have struggled that much I'm not saying I'm struggling now but <laughs> <laughs> I um, hope not <laughs> <laughs> not at all um, but some of the choices that I would have made would would have been so different yeah you know so um, just being able to provide that avenue for our members is, is a plus you for You said us. something really, which is really true, and my sister and I, we always talk. Uh, my sister is doing very well in her nursing career, but I always talk to her. I'm like, I wonder if I chose the wrong... I, I'm in the criminal justice field, but, you know, what I would love to see uh, my paycheck to be is not what it's reflecting with a master's degree. And I always wonder, I'm like, did I pick the wrong career? What did I do wrong? It's just, I think that we need to have these kind of conversations with our young folks and mm -hmm. even professionals. Sometimes, you know, you, you go to the school, you pay all these money and you're left with a debt, but it's not reflecting um, what you went to school for. And I'm like, did I pick the wrong major? I think we should talk about what are some of, some of the uh, career paths you should choose? Um, what are some of the education um, path you should take when you go in college? What you should look out for? What you should pay attention to? Because the reality is once you graduate, you want to make sure that career choice that you made is what is speaking for you and your career and your path because you want to leave something um, for your children. But sometimes people who are not reflecting um, what they went to school for, and they all have all these debts, they're making minimum wage, if they are, mm -hmm. um, they're like, what did I go to school for? Mm -hmm. And education is very powerful, knowledge is powerful. If you have education, my mom always used to tell me, if you have an education, no one can ever take that away from you. Mm -hmm. So, just, oh, sorry, not to cut yeah. you off, but just to respond to what you said, I'm, I think, so I'm an advocate for every career is great, right? So, yeah. and just to add, it's never too late it's never to too get late. into STEM, yeah. right? Um, there's a lot of companies in Boston that would hire you and train you for six months mm -hmm. on coding or whatever it is and they're paying you while they're while they're training wow. so just think about that and for folks listening or watching um, there's a lot of them I mean I can probably drop some names Wayfair is one of them yeah, um, we love their furniture but they're based in Prudential <laughs> so they're not too far away Akamai yeah. is another one mm -hmm. um, and I mean, there there are so many of them out there. Um, they pretty much, I, a lot of them I call have different names, but it's pretty much like an apprenticeship program. But I mean, we think of apprentice as like electrician and plumber. Mm -hmm. But this is you with a laptop, right? And you're coding, you're learning how to do something, and then the pay would be I don't know sixty plus k every year. And it's good that you're sharing that because um, for me, for 2019, my motto is pray, push, and persevere. So any of you know, anyone that's listening to us or you're listening on behalf of your your college child, college student, if you, anyone who's tuning in, if you are in a career that you're not happy, how it turned out, and you're not making the money that you so desire, there's always a way, there's a way, there's a will. You change your career like you just stated. Um, there are companies out there that is willing to train you for six months, but the information has to be available for people to get access to it, which it is, but we are here today to try to help and support the community in any way that we can in order to keep that going for young folks like myself and you all that are here today and those who are listening in today. Yeah, and um, just to touch a little bit, I know we talked about professional development, 
and how important it is. I know a lot of us, um, uh, and myself, I'm speaking from experience, are first-generation college students, yeah. right? Um, you know, our parents didn't have the opportunity that we had or That's have true. now. Um, so being able to, so they can't support us. They, they try their best their to support best, exactly. in whatever way they can, but they can't support us as maybe a mentor who has been through the mm -hmm. same path have. Um, so this, a, a, a slight plug, so this coming Wednesday, January 23rd, uh, we will be hosting uh, our uh, monthly professional development meeting at Draper Laboratories in Cambridge. Um, I don't have the exact address on me, but um, the title is Taking Advantage of a Career Growth, and what we will see at this professional development meeting are uh, minority leaders okay. who have been, who are directors, at, at a, who are in a certain level in their career that mm -hmm. could also speak to us as and younger benefit, as the younger generation yeah, benefit from it exactly um it'd be a panel discussion draper will be hosting um it is free uh so if you would like to attend uh please go on our website uh nsbeboston.org and sign up uh through eventbrite um we will need you to do that as soon as possible because draper is a uh federal not federal it's a government contractor, defense contractor, that um, you will have to uh, provide identification. The security is, is, is high level, so if you are interested, please do so as soon as possible. Um, come out, uh, get a chance to meet us, our other members, uh, folks just like yourself. If you're not interested in NSBE or engineering and want to learn more, or you have kids, uh, nephews, nieces, mm -hmm. other family member, you know, Please direct them to our website as well and uh, learn some more about what we do in the city of Boston and how they could give back as well. Yeah, and as we, um, you know, or as we are towards the end of the show, um, you guys can just share any upcoming events and your website contact information. I'll have it on my Facebook page for everyone else, but for those who are tuning in, well, you guys can share um, the next coming events that you would like to invite. Sure, sure. So. Um, uh, one of our next one, one that I just mentioned at Draper uh, Laboratories, January 23rd, um, which is one of our professional development meetings. Uh, after that, on January 27th, uh, Lottie mentioned uh, the Boston, Nesby Boston, we collaborate with the Boston Ski Party. Uh, we will be going up to Mount Sunapee, so if you're interested in doing that as well. And uh, our Super Bowl party. Uh, which will be at Assembly uh, Lucky Strike in Assembly Row in Somerville. Uh, this is another opportunity where you can come out and just network with us. We watch the game, uh, get to know each other, eat, drink. Um, and of course, the Nesby 30 event, uh, February 23rd. Uh, it is a STEM benefit. Uh, please come out and support. We need your help. Um, and also in March, we do have our national convention, um, March 27th, uh, which will be in Detroit, Detroit this year. Um, and then also, we also do other social events, drinks and discussions, where we'll meet up as a, as a Nesby family. Uh, we'll have provocative uh, conversations as to uh, talk about what's going on in today's society and what changes we could do and how we could also impact. So those are a few uh, dates. Uh, for more information, please visit our website at nsbeboston.org for upcoming events and a chance to stay connected with us. Yeah, I was just going to add real quickly around the um, 30th anniversary um, STEM benefits. So this is new for Boston. Yes. Um, there is no event in the Boston area that celebrates professionals or achievers mm -hmm. in STEM and so we thought okay you know what it's our anniversary year why not inaugurate something so we're launching something new and we're looking for the community to come out and support us um, it's I think it's 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 a great feeling to be in a room celebrating black folks that are accomplishing yeah. great things so mm -hmm. um, we're looking for everyone to come out and support 100% proceeds from this event would go to our youth STEM programs and college scholarships. Yeah. So even if you're not able to attend, we're doing a NSBE 30 for 30. 
where you donate at least thirty dollars to support us for the next thirty years. That's so. awesome. That's and our awesome. goal is to raise thirty thousand uh, dollars in support of that. Of course, we would love to raise more. So if anyone's listening and can write a check for thirty thousand dollars, <laughs> we'd really appreciate that <laughs> yeah. too. Hey, you so. never know. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> um, so I thank you all for um, coming and sharing this wonderful information to uh, the community and all our listeners and fa- Facebook. Facebook viewers, um, and also I was just thinking, do you um, reach out to shelters, like domestic violence shelters, or shelters across the board where young children are there, where you can, you know, reach out because there aren't, they're in a different environment where they would normal normally be due to, you know, unforeseen circumstances in their family. I think that would be a good opportunity to give them a chance to get access to whatever free program you're having. Have you guys ever thought about anything like that? Yeah, so while we haven't reached out to shelters, we, um, we've we collaborated with um, the Boston City um, Office. I'm not sure which department it is, but um, foster um, mm-hmm. kids do attend okay. our events. Okay. So obviously, I think the next step would be to reach out into those communities and take our programs there. So thank yeah. you for that suggestion. Yeah, that's something because I want to thank Phoenix House. It's a domestic violence shelter that has sponsored this radio show. Um, and I think it's something that, you know, something I've been working with them for for several years. And I think that's something uh, one of our uh, department, which is CASP, it's a children department where um, our children can definitely um take advantage of that and that's something that came to my mind so definitely we'll definitely. work on that so yes. now we've made a connection with yes you, so absolutely. you made the connection there and networking. Then we'll definite networking and if there are other programs out there please reach out to us nsbboston.org for contact info we would love to bring mm-hmm. our programs to you um they're free so you don't have to worry about a, a fee or a charge so we would love to share resources thank you so much And again, I would like to thank all my viewers and listeners who are tuning in on WEZE 590. Voice of Reason really appreciates you, and we thank you for all your support. And again, thank you for supporting me and your prayers in any way that you can. If you have any questions for me, um, you can email me at voiceofreasonboston at gmail.com. You can check me out on Facebook, Voice of Reason boston as well as instagram and twitter voice of reason boston and um thank you and enjoy the rest of the day